Hi, everybody. Time's running out on the clock, so there's no last minute to play in the third period this week. Thank you, Sean. That's actually brilliant. Yeah. Hack. Yeah. Hack. <laughs> What? Are you Carlos Menstelia? I'm 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 allowed to draw inspiration from my co-hosts, Jonathan. Inspiration. Inspiration. We, 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 we got pinned along the boards and couldn't dig the puck out in time, so yeah. the clock ran out. And we are literally the Leafs versus the Blackhawks last yeah. night. Just couldn't tie it. Minus the obviously. Anyway, you also get a double dose of me in the actual booth. This is supposed to be a call-in show for me because yeah, I'm out sure. of town working, but mm-hmm. convenience brought us all together. Convenience. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk about NFL free agency. We're going to talk about the University Cups. Cups. Plural. I'm sure the women's one has a different name, but I can't for the life of me tell you what it is. National University Champions. Hockey Nationals. Yes. Uh, we're also going to talk about a couple of incidents in the NHL that were both handled badly, in yeah. one case by regular people and in another case by the league. Yeah. And we've got a couple of other things that we're going to talk about, including the fact that Serge Ibaka is very bad at fighting. Yes. <laughs> anyway, let's kick it off with the University Cup. Yeah. So uh, before the show, you were talking about, so we had some questions. So the bracket came out literally like an hour after we finished recording. Yeah. So, so we record the episode the night before because I'm out of town working for thinking, the foreseeable future. Thinking the matchups aren't going to be decided until like Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday. And they get posted like an hour and a half after we're done. Yeah. So... We were expecting since Tuesday's when the top 10 usually comes out, and that's what they have to use to base the rankings on. We were expecting it was going to be that day. If I'd actually read the regulations closer, I would have actually read that they had to have them out by Monday. That's that's me not reading far enough into the rules and regulation of the University Cup. That's okay. We don't expect you to read all the fine print. But we speculated that because they are supposed to but not required to try to avoid having teams from the same conference play in the first round that they would switch the seeds of the should be seventh seeded Carlton Ravens and the should be eighth seeded Lethbridge Pronghorns Mm -hmm. Uh, we speculated they would switch those two seeds then they didn't all three Canada West teams are on the same side of the bracket yeah, so it's very clear, like, I guess they probably want the AUS and uh, uh, Canada West kind of final that they're probably going to get. Yeah, yeah, I think that's sort of the plan, because Queens, I don't think, is good enough to beat X, although, yeah, I just don't think they're good enough to beat X. Because I think Carlton's the best OUA team, and they drew UNB, which is a bummer. Oh, but the important thing here is they didn't switch the seeds. So then I had to spend the entire week ruminating on the fact that we gave out inaccurate information. We realized it was just a prediction, but I pride myself on these predictions being extremely accurate. Um, I try really, really hard. So (coughs) might. There were obviously some exceptions made, though. I'm sick as a dog, by the way. I apologize to people who are listening. Um, I think it's because Lethbridge is literally so bad they couldn't justify giving them a seed that wasn't the eighth seed. Yeah, like we were talking before the show, like it's kind of surprising that they even get to host a national they must have been projecting that the program was going to grow significantly whenever it was announced yeah they're announced like four or five years ahead i think it's time, three right? something three? like that yeah and uh they because it's on like a rotation right yeah because what, what's the record nine fourteen nine seventeen and two yeah. so you're what like 10 games plus below 500 uh not quite you're you're 10 games exactly if you count overtime losses as losses. Okay. Well, the yeah. thing was, when, when I saw the bracket, I, I like I was under the impression that they wouldn't want, like they would, would want to align the host with Alberta because that's sort of the, the marquee event. So, and, and it comes on the first day of the tournament. It doesn't matter. Lethbridge is getting pounded in the first game. Either way, it's yeah. happening. Yeah, that's true. Like Alberta or UMB, <coughs> they must have, maybe that was their line of thinking. Is like, oh, left. Like even if we switch, Leth- Lethbridge is going to get either UMB or Alberta, and they're pro- and they're going to get creamed. So, well yeah, I think that part of it might also be that because you're in Alberta, you can still market to Alberta fans because it's That's the true. shortest travel distance. Mm-hmm. And is it easier or harder to market to the average fan or like a Golden Bears student, like an Alberta student? Alberta is going to play their rivals in Lethbridge and then their rivals in Saskatchewan or hey they're going to play um this random team from Ontario that you probably mostly know as a basketball school by the way they won their yep. 13th championship in 17 years something like that yep in men's basketball um and then maybe Saskatchewan 
maybe it should have been X. Yeah. Well, it was the same last year too. Like you, you, you didn't get a really good turnout for the for the OUA Canada West games, but whenever UMB or St. FX was playing, even Acadia, yeah. the, the the building was loaded. Yeah, I mean, like that's the thing is they did separate. They didn't seed them in such a way like. In theory, I think they could have maybe seeded them so that Acadia played UNB in the first round last year. Yeah. Because UNB was the two seed, right? You could market it the same way. As, like, but they Acadia. chose not to. But they still got their marquee semifinal with St. FX, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, it's by design, too. So, yeah, yeah. you get um, Alberta. Because you still Le- got to make money. Yeah. You got you get Alberta and Lethbridge in a decent game where you market to the host town as well. Uh, you had... Uh, 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 Saskatchewan playing Guelph, which was pretty one-sided today. They won six one. They won six one. It got a little ugly at the end. There were a couple misconducts and everything, which is kind of sad because I think there was it was some players. Cozen still causing trouble though in net for yeah. opposing teams. Yep, goaltender of the year. He was he won the U Sports goaltender yep. of the year. And uh, yeah, so it's looking like I'm um, barring a who like, was the troublemaker that Saskatchewan had last year? Forsberg. Is he still there? Yep. Yeah. He sure is. <laughs> yeah. Because so. I didn't get to see the Guelph game. I was working. Yeah. So that's going to be uh, pretty fun. I wasn't really paying it. I was kind of like watching it casually. I didn't really see um, who's uh, looking. Do you have a timer going? Oh, shoot. I do yeah. not. <laughs> it's do awkward. Not. Um, Wait. He, he was the hothead. Yeah. 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 Hothead always taking retaliatory penalties. Yeah. Took like three. That's why I was asking because Johnny said yeah. it got ugly at the end. So I sort of assumed. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah, Jesse Forsberg. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, how much time do you think we're at right now? I think, mm-hmm. think. I, th- I think we're like six in. Six in? Okay, let's go yeah, with that. Because we started at 38, and it's 43 now. It's 44. Well, Good. I'm glad Sean's on top of this. Yeah. All right, so let's let's Gotta just let's just go for that. Um, but yeah, so we don't have a second result from the University Cup because we're recording this Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, and sure. Alberta will play Lethbridge and will win. Yeah, barring like a... Like sack Herculean effort, effort. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Fifty-eight saves, just yeah, that might not be enough. Yeah. yeah, literally have to prove like everything Eric Drummy was telling us about like probability for like Cinderella stories and everything. Burn it all in one game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are also currently streaming um, the uh, PEI and Montreal um, Carabins, um women's uh quarterfinal uh and it is currently three to nothing montreal with uh eight minutes left to go in the third so, so that game's over yeah pretty much which we th- sort of expected moving over to the women's bracket that one i predicted entirely correct hmm. you thought guelph was going to be the ups was going to be the upset uh no uh i didn't i predicted manitoba winning that but i predicted the actual bracket lineup oh, correctly. The bracket lineup correctly yeah 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 well that was a little bit more straightforward yeah so. that one's a <laughs> That one's a little easier yeah. because they have to separate the teams. So as far as matchups go, uh, bracket falls in Stu's favor. Uh, they Somewhat. Don't have, they don't have to Assuming Al- – here's the thing. For the entire year, Alberta, Manitoba, and Montreal were one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Actually, I think for a little, for most of the year, Alberta and Manitoba were one and two, one and two, one and two, one and two, mm-hmm. until the end of the year when Montreal won RSEC and Manitoba lost Canada West and they flipped them. Manitoba was supposed to defend a national championship and got beaten by Guelph. Yeah, they uh, mm-hmm. in a game that was shockingly fair. Yeah, it was um, a couple. If I remember correctly, it was a couple of like really quick. The first one was kind of like a snapshot in traffic that kind of food. Fo- yeah, it was like ten. 19 seconds in or whatever. Yeah, something like that. And uh, then the next one was again just uh, a loose puck at the side of the net that ha- that happened to just pop out to Guelph. Uh, Manitoba comes back uh, near the end of the first period and, t- and cuts the lead in half, making it 2-1. And then they score like a minute or two into the third, tie it up, looking good. And then, again, uh, a lot of garbage goals coming uh, from Guelph on that last one. And, uh, yeah, they just they crashed the net, and they, did, they played the right way to knock off a team that uh, – was uh, much higher classed uh, than they are for sure. Well, that's how you got to do it too, right? It's it's all about the greasy goals that are going to take. Well, Guelph, Guelph outshot them in the third. Guelph was the better third period team in a tie game. So if yeah, you, if you're Manitoba, you can't let that happen. Yeah. You're the defending national champion. Every trend and like the way like score effects work and everything like that. Like if you're tied or like trailing going into the third, like 
nine times out of ten you outshoot the opponent, especially yep. in a game of that yeah. uh, with that much at stake. So because you just go all offense and everything, and they didn't even get a chance to <coughs> pull the goalie until like thirty seconds. In. Yeah, like they were yeah. very. They didn't go all in in that third period in order to put enough pucks on net to uh, like will their way into a win there. And and uh, the thing is like. Early. From our end, we complain about pole bias all the time, about yeah. how the poles are biased against AUS women's hockey. I don't know if this justifies it because Guelph was, you know, the fourth seeded team in the country. But we complained about Guelph leapfrogging St. Thomas because for the entire year, they were beneath them. Yeah. The entire year until they won a title. And then they got leapfrogged above them for no reason. Well, I actually got like a, a, a low-key salty text from, from my boss about that. And, and it, it's not about the fact that Guelph is ahead of you because realistically you'd rather play McGill than Manitoba. I mean, a hundred percent. We talked about this at the beginning. We talked about this on uh, yep. Monday. Not, not with the way Manitoba played. Like I'd, I'd have rather played that game, but e- either way, I think if you're picking before the tournament, you'd rather play McGill. Yes. Oh, for oh, sure. Easily. <clears throat> easily. Absolutely. But the thing is like Montreal's not dominating UPEI shots are 25 to 14 scores. Only three, nothing. We expected that game to be a massacre. Yep. Um, UPI looking good for next year. But my thing is it sort of makes all the other teams seem beatable. Yeah. Yeah. Mortal. The one thing you were uh, mentioning beforehand was uh, hope now all we have to see is when Alberta plays tomorrow to see whether or not they're like as underrated as like the other Canada West teams have looked so far. And like Toronto's n- Toronto is a weaker team. They were the third or fourth seed in OUA. So it's actually kind of a measuring stick. They're better than UPEI, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I think if you're Alberta, that has to be a definitive win. Yep. It does. I think if you want to put the fear of God into St. Thomas, if that's who you end up facing. Or McGill. Like, let's not pretend that McGill can't win a title. Yeah. And I think for St. Thomas, like, you have a little bit of a tougher matchup. So if you look dominant against a closer matchup in McGill, like, I think... That's something probably both coaches are putting the bugs in their ears and everything. Yep. Saying like, um, it's statement time. This is the last three games of the season, hopefully. So. Well, and this is where you need your big game players to step up because it was um, her name escapes me now. The leading scorer for Alberta. Um, she's gonna be key like for this series. Um, or for uh, the tournament, Poznikov. Um, yeah, no, she she's going to be key, and she really needs to step, like, take her game to the next gear, especially against the deeper you move on because it, it just gets tougher in St. Thomas. And like we say, people say that AUS is the, the weaker conference, but it's really not. Holy it, crap, it's, that it's goaltending record, too. Top heavy. That goaltending yep. stat well, line is stupid. 11-0. 0.57 goals against <laughs> average and a 960. Wow, I am percentage. just off today, aren't I? Yeah. So repeat that again, Sean, because uh, all we heard was Triceratops. Triceratops. It, it, yeah, it's, it's almost like when it goes off down below in, in the Aiken Center. Yeah. In the dressing room areas. Has that happened before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I was right outside of Sarah's right outside of Sarah's dressing or er, uh, yeah, the yeah. office. Really? Waiting for her to come up for an interview, yeah. It's only happened once, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's only been the once. Has it only been the once? Yes. It's yeah, only I, been I, the once. I'm not sure if I believe down you. There. It's I only been the once. It's going down there, but not like only once when we were there, yeah. Because we're professional. It's never gone off during an interview. No? No, it was before the interview. We've never caught it on the uh, actual tape. That's so but, funny. Um, Try Sarah to, uh, Kirsten Chamberlain. Oh, yeah. I do not have a professional ringtone at all. Kirsten no. Chamberlain, 11 0 0, 0.57 goals against average, and a 963 save percentage. A thing of oh, note, though, is she's only played 11 games. Yeah. Of a 28 of, game season. So they must have like sure. two really good goaltenders. At well, the other me and game. Sean talked about this earlier this year. They had three goaltenders at one point in time that had all played five to seven games and were ranked one, two, and three in the country. That's crazy. Yeah. It's gross. That's, That's indicative of the team in front of them, though. Like, it, like you have to think that it plays a part. Like, you're not a number one team in the country with bad goaltending. Yeah. No. Or, or a bad defense in front well, of that's, the Well, that's the thing that blew my mind is Abby had a phenomenal year. Second team all-star, playoff MVP. You look at her numbers compared to everyone else in the tournament – She's pedestrian. Yeah, which is crazy. Which is crazy to say, considering we've been like hyping her. Like, yeah. Well, like AUS goaltending is like her and Kendra were the sixth and seventh best goaltenders in the 
in the country. Yeah. By the way, Kendra named to the uh, was the all rookie team. Yep. Yeah. Her, her and Jenna and McLean. Jenna McLean for for U Sports. Yeah, and I think. Or for uh, AUS, I think also for U Sports, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for U Sports. Yeah, they, they, they had the about. awards gala last night. They were announced to the all rookie team, and man, that team has a bright future. <laughs> I think it's more surprising for Jenna than Kendra. Oh yeah, yeah. Kendra is almost top five in the country in goaltending as a quiet, freshman, right? Yeah, Jen, Jenna's quietly one of the better defense in the in the conference. But yeah, so for Albert, so say St. Thomas plays Alberta, which is kind of like. Like, that's probably who they face if they beat McGill. It feels like a collision course. Um, I, I can't I can't see Toronto upsetting Alberta. But if you had asked me seven hours ago, I would have told you I couldn't see Guelph upsetting Manitoba. So that's fair. Anything can happen. So do you uh, – uh, Alexuk is their uh, <coughs> off, uh, best defense. Yes, forward? Emily Alexic. So you staple her to Poznikov. That's, your, ma- that's your matchup. Is she your best defensive forward, though? Well, she Maybe. won the award, didn't she? I think. I see. <laughs> yeah, but that's sort of misleading. Because remember when I think it was after game one of the UMB series, Peter Murphy said he doesn't match up the forward lines up against other forwards. No, he doesn't he play does. that game. He matches, he matches defensemen yeah. up to forwards. Okay. Yeah. So who do you put on Posnikov? If, if we're talking about defense, probably the Paige Jackson pairing. Paige With, Jackson um, pairing. Is that is that who you do? Not Galati and Woods. I'm talking about singular player. No, Ooh. because they're like they log a large portion of ice time when 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 the big line is there. Who is Peter Murphy um, scolding when Poznikov scores? Page. Yep. Page. If yep. we're picking a single person, because mm-hmm. you don't pick you don't. Poznikov scores with strength, so you can't choose Florence. You need okay, like if if we're you can't choose Florence odd and like. The strongest ones. Galati and Woods have better offensive line than defensive line. You want to save their minutes for the offensive zone. How many chances are you going to get on Chamberlain? Yeah. Chamberlain. Chamberlain. And every shot needs to be quality against her if you want a chance at even squeaking. So it's probably Paige. Jackson. It's probably the Jackson-Stanford pairing. And it's really weird because we always talk about how you you like uh, symmetry down your defensive pairings. uh, Left (laughs) shots on left side, right (laughs) shots. But he has... Three different pairings. So he on one pairing, two right shots. Another pairing, two left shots. Like he, he doesn't care. Who's the two left shot pairing? Uh, Galati Woods. Yes, that's right. Yep, Galati Woods, and then Jackson Stanford. I always forget the Galati shoots left. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so that's what needs to happen. That that's exactly what needs to happen. And I'm not too confident with like Paige Jackson's speed per se, but like she plays a very physical game. So if you're talking about just well, wearing them down, I think you also have the benefit of, and I know that. You know, Murphy says that he doesn't play forwards to them. But so what your concern with Poznikov is that she's going to beat you because she's big and she's strong. And I mean, she's also fast, but like we can't give her credit for everything. Yeah. You put a physical defender on her like Jackson and you get someone who's quick and defensively minded with their stick like Olivia Reed to be your backup from the forwards. Okay. And then you try to box her out. Yeah, and well, and that's how you're gonna have to. I mean, like you're you're playing a superstar. How do you beat a superstar if you're an NHL team? Play your superstars on. If if you're the Leafs, how do you stop Alex Ovechkin? You play Tavares and Marner against them, or you play your fast guys. Yeah, for sure. Guys who can attack. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that Pozikov is Ovechkin, although her numbers sort of line up kind of favorably for the league. For sure. But I think you play her the same way an NHL team would play against a star. How do you stop Crosby? You stick a physical guy on him to mess up his game, keep a fast forward there as your backup, and you just hope he doesn't beat you because yeah. a good enough player can just beat you. Yeah, and if yeah. we're talking about, like, we talked about, like, Abby Clark's probably going to have to steal a game. That's probably It's the game. Alberta game. Yeah, so no, <coughs> no goals. Like, if Alberta scores early, that's probably That wor- could be game over, yep. Yeah, it could be game over right right from the spread from the start. We're talking about a point five seven goals against average. There's a there's a realistic chance. Forty three percent of the time, mm-hmm. she doesn't allow a goal. Yep. Period. End of sentence. Um, do you know what the last time I heard a goals against average that low was? When was reading uh, like a hockey history book, and it was numbers posted, I believe, by George Vesna back in like the twenties. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. Anyway. That doesn't happen. So about 20 minutes moving on? 
Yep, sounds good. Um, so I think we'll just run through some very like uh, news and notes things that we can get before we get into the other kind of meaty uh, conversations. Uh, so um, Marcus Stroman uh, was named the opening day start. When is opening day for the MLB? It's week and a half. <coughs> week and a half? I soon. Know. I didn't know. It's week soon. Week and a half. Okay. Um, so I'm guess he he hasn't signed a contract. Has is is a contract extension? He was talking about is he still under contract right now he's under contract for the year yeah it's a little different in baseball because he's under team control until after next year oh yeah yeah it's it's like until you don't have control it's essentially a string of one year deals and then eventually get arbitration rights and then after you lose control they're essentially unrestricted yeah so it's it's sort of like if he doesn't negotiate a deal he's sort of forced into a one-year contract oh yeah so yeah and it's just a string of that until he's eligible to walk yeah so I'm assuming, like, hopefully, like that will get done at some point in the season. I imagine they'll try. Yeah, I yeah. imagine they'll either try or they'll trade him. Yeah, uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, reassigned to the mon- is so he's still battling that injury. Yeah, he has no bleak strain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure the Blue Jays management is quite happy with how that's working. Uh, out for TSN them. said it best. They literally had an article that was titled uh, "Guerrero Jr.'s Oblique Strain May Have Solved Toronto's Problem for Them." Yep, for, for sure. Uh, moving on, uh, Serge Ibaka got suspended three games for fighting. Uh, he Cleveland, didn't land a punch. Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, Mar- Marquise Chris. Yeah, Marquise Chris. Marquise Chris, uh, but didn't land a punch. He missed everyone. Yeah, and apparently real. that's not the first time that's happened to him. Well, Serge missing punches. Yeah. Basketball players can't fight, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Go and look at any basketball brawl that doesn't feature Ron or Test. If you're going to get that's, suspended that's for fair. three games, land a friggin' Are you punch. talking about Meta World Peace? No, I'm talking about Ron or Test. <laughs> <laughs> um, the so, artist formerly known as. Um, speaking of people who are fighting in inappropriate places and smashing things. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Uh, so he smacked. <coughs> was a, it a fan's phone? A fan was trying to take a picture <coughs> like on the street. I'm not sure whether like selfie style or anything. That I don't think they bothered breaking down the details of it. But apparently he grabbed the phone out of the fan's hand and smashed it. And he got sent, like put in jail for like a couple hours. And then he got bailed out. And then made like the most like hippy dippy like fake like Instagram post saying like, oh like change is always happening or some sort of like like trying to be woke bull crap like that so dude's off his rock somebody needs to beat that guy yeah oh oh, wait (laughs) yeah surprisingly Stephen a smith actually put it together pretty well (laughs) he's like he's he's got to win like we haven't seen conor mcgregor win a fight in like four years because last couple fights were what like Habib, habib kicking the crap out of him we saw him throw a dolly through a bus and then uh lose to floyd lose to floyd in like the biggest like money grab of all time. Yep. So yeah, it's weird. he's not a fighter, he's a whiskey salesman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was like the day after all his whole Instagram was just posts about his whiskey. He was like having like a photo shoot and stuff like that for his whiskey brand. Whatever, man. Dude doesn't care, he's a clown. Um so I think we should uh take a couple minutes to address the uh Morgan Riley incident, although it's kind of like died down and it's borderline like <laughs> not newsworthy um so is it time for me to put on the breakdown voice sure that's probably really nice for all of our listeners to hear okay Mm. so game against tampa bay lightning this was three nights ago now a couple nights ago yeah they got kicked up and down the ice because they're injured and like because it's tampa well yeah they they were like well you're playing Tampa to begin with and then you're you have your top two D men out and a couple forwards as well so anyway uh, pucks coming down into the Leafs end they're on the power play I think so yeah yes they're on the power play uh, Morgan Riley gets tied up with I think it was Yanni Gord something someone like that uh, there was no penalty call Riley thought that there should have been a penalty call and then the a fit the the Story as it was told, I think, is the best place to start, was that in response to the call not being made, Morgan Riley turned to the official and called him a... Ducking baguette. That's really great. Yeah. Hmm. I've been Uh, thinking about this for a couple of days. I was going to say a derogatory epitaph for sex, followed by a derogatory epitaph for homosexual. Yeah. That, 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 you get, you get the kind of rhyme scheme there of what... 
what he said. And also, he's facing towards the official and happens to be skating by a mic that's mounted on top of the glass. And it, I can understand why people thought it was him initially. Okay, no, 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 no. You're jumping ahead. Okay. Citizen journalists, yeah. the most trustworthy news source out there. Well, there, there were a couple, like, they're, like, considered bloggers, but, like, they got a following and are known usually for giving pretty good, like, intelligent, like, news and everything like that. So I'm not going to let them off the hook for being amateurs. That's for sure. Anyway, started reporting about Riley's thing about Riley using these slurs because Riley, I think, is also, like, Toronto's You Can Play representative or whatever. Yeah, he's, like, he's marched in gay pride parades. He's very open about that as well. There's, like, a bunch of stuff for Morgan Riley. Yeah. And then it comes out about six hours after that, pretty much first thing the next morning, that the league's investigating Riley. Mm-hmm. Uh, <coughs> at this point, we decided that we were going to wait and see what the results were before we made any statements about it. Yeah. Which, to the credit of most major, like the only thing I saw major networks reporting was the fact mm. that there was an edge, uh, there was uh, an investigation. Nobody that I saw <coughs> from like a major news network like TSN, Sportsnet, was directly accusing Riley of doing what people thought he did. For anybody who wants to know where the sound bite came from. Has that been officially announced, though? Uh, I don't think it has been officially they the, confirmed. No. They didn't put it in the statement. But I think that it's pretty safe to assume. So, like, well, the this, NHL looked over it. They had people testify. Sound engineers went over the footage. So what's believed to have happened, and it's the most reasonable thing we have to go on, and the league's probably never going to confirm this directly, is Riley cussed at the official. Yep which is still not good, Yeah. at the exact same time that someone on the Lightning bench told Yanni Gord to rag the puck. Yes. Rag it, rag it, rag it. Well, one thing that was brought up is that Gord Miller's mic mm-hmm. immediately went on, or whoever was between the benches, mm-hmm. his mic was hot a couple seconds, like the couple seconds while that was being said, and then he started talking. So he, mu- he could <laughs> He probably had his mic on for a couple seconds in between the bench that also picked up. It, it's Gord or whoever was on the Tampa Bay bench. <coughs> yeah. So for anybody who is not a hockey player, do one of you – well, I guess Sean's the one who's – but you guys yeah. have both played hockey, actually. Yeah, I've yeah. played hockey before, yeah. Do either of you want to explain what ragging the puck is? I've, I've never heard the term like – fi- I've never heard like when I was playing – that was actually the first time I'd ever heard the term. John, it's night. it's really j- just kill the clock, pin it against the boards. Well, yeah, I kind of I kind of yeah, got ha- it. Ha- handle the puck, kill time. Yeah, yeah. It's essentially don't don't let them. It is yeah. a hockey term. The yeah. guy uh, the guy who came up with like the ragged theory, I think it was uh, at Flintor on Twitter. Um, yes, who's a sound engineer? <laughs> yeah, he uh, quoted a, a Ken Dryden book. Shared a screenshot of a Ken Dryden book where he yeah. was talking about that term. Okay, so I, I, I have the definition up here. He's, he's, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Flinter, if I'm not mistaken, said on Twitter he was a sound engineer. Mm-hmm. Or he, he has a qualification to make this call, is my point. Yeah. yeah. So the official definition on the Wiktionary, so to rag the puck means to retain possession of the puck by skillful skating and stick handling without attempting to score as a deliberate tactic intended to use up time. Okay. Literally what St. Thomas has done to win like two-thirds of their games this year. Exactly. Yes. Um, so... And we'll probably have to do a couple more times if they want to win a national championship. Yeah. So I'm confident in the league's decision, not just because, like, not because, like, obviously I would be pretty disappointed as a Leafs fan if Riley had said that, but like the NHL has the capability to go back and single out all the individual audio channels, and there are a lot pointed at the ice. Yep. Which makes it even more ridiculous the people that immediately jumped on Riley because there it could have come from a fan. Like, how many times have you been like? like watching a game and you'll hear a fan's like the Acadia next brawl. If you took the camera from the fan in the crowd, you would have assumed that X was the one who started that brawl entirely unprovoked. Exactly. There are multiple audio and visual recording devices on the ice. And the only people that can piece that together for sure is the NHL. You need to wait for the NHL's call. 
Now, I don't want to, like, I'm not going to say the names of, like, the people who were immediately, like, finger-pointing Riley and I mean, like, him okay, everything. so this is not excusing them. I want to make this abundantly clear. But I don't want to harass them either because they probably, they all sound like they felt it pretty crappy, but there was especially one of them. They're trying to get a hot take so that they can get a job. Yeah. A real job. And some of them were just like, okay, like, I'm sorry, I, I apologized and everything. Like, why are you still ragging on me? Like, like no pun intended there. But um, <clears throat> this is the, like... Because for some people, it's not enough. Yeah. Even if you've retracted your statement, there is now a part of your fan base that will, regardless of any evidence prevent- presented, always assume that Morgan Riley is a homophobe. Exactly. Exactly. Because for a something... fraction of people, there is no level of forgiveness that is enough. Yeah. And that is something you cannot take back. And that is why when you jump to this, where there's clearly evidence that needs to be sifted over, there is no, ex- there is no way you can say that you like, looked at all the evidence before you presented that take. Because there was none. There was no investigation done you, at the time. You had it. an audio channel. Maybe two or three at best. The NHL has 15. Yes. It's like accusing someone of a crime. I, I don't know no if they actually have 15. That was sort of yeah. hyperbole. It's probably yeah. more, to be honest with you. So it's like if you, you count like all like the ref can right? the ref without mics a body. and everything like that. So murder investigation without a body, like that. It's really what it is. That's that's extreme, but like <laughs> yes. scaled down. Yes, it's the same kind same of concept. comparison. Yeah. Anyway, we've spent way too much mm. time on this already. It's don't. Don't jump ahead. It, don't just don't try to be first. Try to be right. People who are watching the show, go watch the newsroom. Go watch the second season of the newsroom. There is literally one where they're talking about breaking a story in then in that season of the newsroom about military weapons being used for war crimes. And one of the guy points out, one of the people points out that you know he goes, if I had evidence that you know a fat man in a red suit was flown by eight reindeer, I would break the story that Santa is real. And somebody else in the newsroom points out and goes, but you don't. You have a voice recording that says that that says that Santa probably flew on this day, and you have evidence that reindeer were there, and you have evidence that, you know, the, the fat man in the red suit was also probably there, but you have no evidence that those three things were related. Yes, and that's crucial. Because all you need is for one thing to not tie together, and then your whole thing falls apart. Which is, by the way, spoilers, what happens in that season of the newsroom. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we can put this to bed. Think before you tweet, people. Yep. Although that's probably going to fall on a lot of deaf ears. Yep. All right. Moving on uh, to something that will probably make you a little bit mad. Chris Kreider. That's <sighs> you and pulling a MMA spinning back elbow on Pedersen. Do you want to know what's frustrating? What? At least the NHL's consistent. What do you mean? Pedersen didn't miss the game. He missed the rest of the period. Mm-hmm. Um, Kreider was assessed a five in a game nope. and a fine afterwards. Okay, yeah. Okay, so... That should be multiple games, though. He elbowed someone in the face. <laughs> people get elbowed in the face all the time. Yeah, but, like, mm-hmm. he, first, he, mi- intent, he missed the hit. He literally swung his body back around to hit his person... <laughs> Pedersen in the face. You're right. Yes. That was not my point. Mm-hmm. My point was that this is consistent with the way that the NHL is doling out discipline. Doesn't mean it's right, though. Are we going to have the same conversation we've had half a dozen times this year that the NHL needs to, like, carte blanche, wipe their entire yeah. suspension record off the books and start from scratch? And start. Yeah. yeah, no. You've already set the precedence. The ma- I, I, would, that, I would literally be negotiating that into the next CBA. Yeah, the, give the player something small that they want in exchange for carte blanche. You get to redo the suspension system. Yeah, because like, it's garbage. Yeah, there's too many like parts of the suspension rabbit hole that are just looping in circles that are not making any sense anymore. Kreider should be getting three or four games. Yeah, absolutely, at least. Especially like, and I realize we've said this before. You shouldn't treat it differently because of who they are. He attacked a superstar rookie, and. Almost ended, almost took out, like, destroyed Carey Price's knee. You remember that? Oh, earlier this year? No, this is a couple couple years ago. In 20, 2014. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that like a playoff series? Yeah, it was in the conference finals. Yes, it yep. was. And then, yeah. Yeah. 
Although like, that was the King's year, right? I think King's so. King's yeah. Rangers. Yeah. 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 So like. <coughs> realistically though is say for example that's Louis Erickson instead does he still swing around and clock him in the face do you think he's aware it's Pedersen when he's doing it absolutely I don't want to talk about this anymore yeah no it's it's a bummer but but like the fact of the matter is oh yeah players know who's around them and who's on the ice at the, at the, at the same time and if it was Crosby people would be calling for Kreider's head absolutely just saying and, and Pedersen will be considered get it Pedersen should be getting, like, should have that kind of following in a couple of years. He's just a rookie. Yep. And uh, hopefully he uh, recovers. I think he he will be out, like, the next couple of games. He's hoping to return by the end of the season. I know he was back for that game. Was he? Yeah. Okay. He returned. He'll probably be fine. Mm -hmm. They they might hold him out a game just to make sure his brain jars on correctly because he did get clocked earlier this year. Yeah, and like, yeah. what's what's there? Like, you guys are well out of a playoff spot at this point. You're probably yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, manage manage the player, not the not the team. The team is yeah. pretty set in where it's going. Teams ho- team set for next year, and hopefully we add a Hughes to a Hughes. Yeah, <laughs> um, Eric Brandstrom, uh, the key piece in the uh, Mark, Mark Stone Mark deal. Mark Stone deal uh, between Vegas and Ottawa. Uh, highly touted defensive prospect uh, makes his NHL debut tonight. At the time that we're recording, not tomorrow when this airs. Yeah, but uh, so he will have made his <laughs> NHL debut. Um, I don't know. I don't know anymore whether this is a good or bad idea for the sentence. What to play him now? Play him. I mean, now. see what you've got. Yeah. See, see, we got some down for the HL playoffs if they're in a spot. That'd be this, cool. This is get his feet wet. Toronto, a couple of years ago, when they just brought all the kids up. Yeah, fair enough. They're well, talking about. Flourish. <coughs> they were interviewing uh, Timothy Lilligren and mm. he's saying like he wants to break the lineup as soon as possible. Not this year. If if uh, Dermot or Gardner's not ready for the playoffs, eh, maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. You could. I like it. You could. Yeah, I. I'd he plays limited him. minutes as your extra defenseman. Like yeah, he plays like what eight minutes a game. I would rather him take up Marinson's minutes than Marinson, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, you know it's not going to happen though. I know. To be fair, I know. I, mean, I off, can still dream. Off topic, I think Marinson's been kind of good, actually. I don't. I don't know. All I know is the Leafs have been trashed the last couple. Yes, of games. they have. They, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You can't. You you can't hide from that. Yeah. Five four comeback aside, they still lost, and they were still down five nothing after two periods, which is not good. Um, speaking of the Leafs, just another <laughs> uh, couple lineup. Things. So Casper Kapanen is out with a concussion again. Like the Leafs are really banged up. So hope they still have a good amount of games to get their roster back. I think is Zach Hyman has he been out too? Well, he's been out with an illness, but Babcock said he's going to be in the lineup tomorrow. Yeah, I think there's a flu bug going around the entire team. Oh and yeah, everything. around around the league. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Sure. Brent Burns had it. So like, just let that burn through. Like, hopefully we'll be all ship shape by the time. And hey, who knows? That might that's some extra rest for those players as well, just to get well. So it might benefit them against the uh, um, crash course that the Bruins series is going to be. And um it blows my mind. It blows my mind that some guys play with the flu. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? No. I, I can barely get up and go to Also, class. we lost our studio. If that happened. Uh, yeah. The battery must not have been uh, completely charged. Oh, well. Oh, well. You know, it's when okay. I have the flu, I have a hard time getting up and going to class for 50 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. No. I mean, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, probably not. But some people do. Mm-hmm. Some people are just that. That's how a whole team gets the flu, though, right? No, really. Is it's, like, extremely contagious. Yeah. Absolutely. And then one guy comes in because, you know, he doesn't want to be the guy. Because, like, if you're a hockey player, you don't want to be the guy who calls in sick. Yeah, that's true. No. That's true. <clears throat> um, so one more thing for, like, Leafs lineup as far as uh, they signed a university defenseman um, from – Mary Hurst or Mercy Hurst? I'm not sure what. Mercy Hurst? Yeah, I'm not sure what part of the states that's from. If it is. Probably or, Minnesota. Something like that. They usually are. Um, so, oh, wait, no. Mercy Hurst, I think, is from New York. So they signed him to a two year uh, future entry level contract. Uh, uh, this is uh, Joseph uh, Dusak. Uh, Dusak has 16 goals, 47 points, and 37 games in his uh, breakout junior season this year. And I think he's Mercy been, Hurst University is in Erie, Pennsylvania. Okay, cool. Um, and he was assigned to the Marlies on a uh, tryout basis. So another good like a depth on uh, it's a right-handed defenseman and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, should work out down the line if he uh, sticks around that long. So yeah, Mercy Hurst Lakers, they're uh, they're a pretty competent program. 
Mm-hmm. We've got some good. They've got some good alumni. Sorry, folks. We just took a quick break to uh, fix the lights and everything like that. Had to plug it in and charge it like I should have done in the first place. I mean, to you guys, you won't see anything. The people on the people on the vidcast will notice. But yeah, for sure. Uh, so where were we? Uh, uh, Mercyhurst. Um, they had a couple notable alumni. They were really good last year. They were very mediocre this year. Um, their most notable alumni is currently a goalie for uh, Joker it in the KHL. Okay. Um, so moving on from that, we have some uh, milestones. It's been a lot of milestones this season. Ton. Yeah. Ton in the last, like, two weeks. It's kind of coming to, like, you know, like, the uh, a couple years ago, the 2016 worst year where Trump gets elected, but, like, all those, uh, like, there's a abundance of, like, high-profile, like, celebrity deaths and everything. Yeah, yeah. We're kind of getting the positive kind of thing, like, all the... Like when we started like watching and paying attention to hockey, like pe- well, this is this is all the payoffs. This is the thing we have to think about is this is all the payoff from like oh four, oh five, oh six, yeah, oh seven draft classes. Now are all guys that have now had ten years in the NHL, yeah. ten to twelve years in the NHL. The three or four year span where like every first round pick was money. Yeah, pretty for the most part. For the most part, except the ones the Leafs picked. <laughs> mm, you're a Leafs. Yeah. I mean, like, he turned out okay. Sagan. Oh, 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 wait. Oh, dear. <laughs> Dougie Hamilton. So, uh, Connor McDavid uh, continues to be the shiny, the lone lost star on the Edmonton Oilers. Leon Dreisaitl would like to talk to you. That's that's fair. Okay. He's mm-hmm. dry, dry has been better than McDavid over the last 20 games. Don't at me. That's That's fair. Uh, but uh, McDavid, uh, the fifth player in NHL history to have three of one hundred point seasons by the time he is twenty three. That's dumb. That's what insane. are th- what is he twenty uh, two now? He's twenty one. Wait, he has a chance at four hundred point seasons. Something like that, I think. Hold on, Ugh. I'll maybe. Check. Um, who who are the other four? Uh, uh, Crosby. Hold on, hold on. I'm covering it so Sean can't, right. <laughs> Sean can't read it. I want to verify something. Is Gretzky not on this list because he played in the dub? No, Gretzky is on this list. I'll okay. Give, I'll give you that one. Okay, Gretzky. Who are the, who are the other three? Um, Crosby. Crosby, yep. Because Sean said Crosby already, yeah, so yeah. I'll give mm-hmm. Sean credit for that. Yep, two more. Um, it's one that's pretty obvious and one that's not. Oh, Ovi? Yeah. Nope. Oh, no. It's not Lemieux. Oh. Lemieux is. Yeah, Lemieux yep. is one. Who's the last one? This is the not and very obvious one. The, is he playing? Mike right? Gardner. Nope. Is he playing right now? No, the no. Old, old player. Oh, it's old, old player. Um, How old? Daryl Sittler? Nope. No. Think like pretty like B or C level like Hall of Famer. Wow, that that's awkward. Or I guess not. I don't really know that much about this player. Maybe I'm talking him down too much. But uh, it's not Marcel Dion, is it? No, no, no. I'll give it to you, uh, Dale Howardchuck. Oh, oh, that's fair. Yeah, because he like was a monster for the Jets those first few years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so three sure 100 point seasons by the time they were. Also, how three. dare you, sir? Yeah, is, C am, level Hall of Famer. Am, am how I, am, dare you, sir? Probably compared to the rest of the people from his era. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I meant. Um, speaking of Ovi, he hit 1,200 points. That's why I thought he might have been one of them. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you see that? Uh, where that makes him the thirty third player. Something like that. Yeah. I, I thought you'd have the numbers. I don't. I don't keep track of the, like how many. Like twelve hundred. Twelve hundred is a good number. You don't need to justify it by how many. Like, it's pretty safe to assume that everyone that's hit twelve hundred points is probably in the Hall of Fame. For the yeah. Most part. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, Ovi hits. Uh, t- did you see that moment where um, uh, I think it was against the Penguins? I think where he where he got it, and Crosby went up to like pulled him in to like. Whisper in his ear, like, say, like, congratulations, like, show respect. And the rest thought they were fighting and, like, tried to, like, break them up and stuff like that for a second until they realized, oh, oh it's just right, cool. Right, right. And That's great. Like that. That's so, great. Yeah. Uh, Malkin also hit 1,000. I'm not sure if that was in the same game or I think it was, like, the game before that or something like that. Malkin hits 1,000. Uh, also going to be in the hall. <laughs> yeah. He, sh- he should be first ballot for sure. Yep. And I think. probably. Flurry I'm chirped not- him. He, he I don't know w- if you guys saw that video. Oh, yeah. like uh, I'm not sure how he got a hold of a Pittsburgh, Mike, but he's just like, yeah, Malkin, I don't know uh, how you scored so many points because you never scored any in practice. <laughs> God, love that Rest man. Rest in peace. Love that man. I love that man. Flower might win another cup this year. Yep. He might win a Vesta. Yep. 
Yeah. Mo- most games played, most wins. Oh, also going yeah, into the hall. Yeah. So yeah. so so we've named four Hall of Famers. Yeah. And I'm about to name the fifth. Oh. Uh, Carey Price earns his 315th win. He is the Canadian's all-time leader in wins. And he still has another, uh, what what is it, <laughs> six years left? Six on years on his contract? No, yeah. he just started it this year. Oh, did he? So he has seven. Yeah, yeah. The, the oh, first yeah. Year of the con- yeah. No, yeah. Um, it's seven after this one, yeah. As you're talking, like, he could possibly get 500 with a single team. That's got to be, like, an NHL record for one team. Well, he's at 315 now, so yeah. he would need, like, 40 wins a season and that's across seven Montreal, seasons. Though. If Montreal gets he good. He could get, like, 450, though. And it's impressive that Price has done this on some pretty, pretty awful, awful abs team. Absolutely. Well, he's had some I mean, he did win a heart. Because he, yeah. li- he literally carried them. Yeah, exactly. Pun not intended. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, um, definitely. Like, It's so, so surprising to me for how good the Habs were for so long mm-hmm. that it's only 315. Yeah. I get that those seasons were much shorter, yeah. but, like, still. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing, the thing that, like, changed that, like. I like how we're saying only 315, even though 300 wins is, like, a um, goalie milestone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, if Pat- Patrick Wall obviously would have had that record by a long shot, if uh, uh, what's what's okay, we're, we're not. Yeah. Uh, if Mario Tremblay didn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so uh, we're getting into how much time do we have left? We have about uh, probably fifteen minutes or so. Fifteen minutes. Uh, um, probably ten actually. Um, let's talk about NFL free agency to kind of close out the show here. Yep. Um, s- uh, Browns are in the AFC North or NFC North? AFC North. AFC North. Are they the favorites to take that division next year? Yes, because all the other teams are already on the decline. Yeah. And now Baker Mayfield has someone to throw the ball to. <laughs> so who does he friggin' ever? Yeah. So he. So there's Baker Mayfield, who is gonna be like an A A plus quarterback for. Seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you have Odell Beckham Jr. Jr. Who else? Who else do you have on that roster? Okay. You're gonna have to stall for time for a second. I'll get the Browns roster up here. Yeah. Um, also, I guess I'll t- also talk about how uh, Nick Foles signed with the ja- Jaguars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Jaguars <laughs> <coughs> announced they were moving on from Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles? Who? <laughs> Blake Bortles. Uh, he was a quarterback for, I want to say, Central Florida. Okay. And Jacksonville specifically drafted him because he was a Florida guy who went to a Florida university and he was highly touted and he just didn't pan out. Uh, okay. Unfortunate. Um, so Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Browns uh, just added Odell Beckham Jr. Yep, and they already had Baker Baker Mayfield. Baker they, Mayfield. Have, mm-hmm. they have their uh, they have their prize quarterback. They Who, do. Yep. In addition, they have uh, tight ends Demetrius Harris, Farrow Brown, and Seth De Val. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, sorry. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Farrow Brown is the one that everyone's sort of talking about. He has one year of NFL experience. He's from Oregon. His last year playing for Cleveland, he didn't get any time. If I'm not saying he didn't get any field time, but people are expecting really big things from him because he tended at Oregon. Um, one second here. Trying trying to verify a few things here just to make sure. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Wait, is this what I'm thinking of? Odell Beckham Jr. is the only one that's uh, uh, they acquired this offseason, though. They had all those yes. players last year. Now, they also have, like, a their offense looks legitimate, very, very legitimate. Because mm-hmm. they also have Jarvis Landry at wide receiver. Um, they add Odell Beckham Jr. They have they have an air offense. That's how you win in the NFL now. Yep. So we, it, it's so disappointing that Joe Thomas isn't going to get to play on this team. Yeah. Because he was a, he's a Hall of Fame center who played for years on the miserable, god-awful Browns teams. Yeah. And he was the only man who never got beat on the line. <clears throat> he's the guy who kept posting the, uh, the really cool Instagram updates following the Browns this season. Oh, really? Yeah, we're like, well, Budweiser did this thing in Cleveland where they put Cleveland Browns themed fridges in all the bars, and okay. they had locks on them that would deactivate when the Browns won their first game because oh, they really? went winless last year. Oh wow! And uh, Joe Thomas had one in his house. Oh really? What was in it? Uh, just beer. 
Just Beard? Yeah. Okay. But like, He's like the, the heart and soul guy. Yeah, he, he was their center. You know, he defended some terrible quarter packs. Yeah. He, people are pretty sure he's a guaranteed Hall of Famer because yeah. his numbers are pretty impressive for being on some pretty bad teams. Okay. Um, so are the Browns Super Bowl contenders? Can we go that far? Vegas changed their odds. Before they picked up Odell Beckham Jr., they were 27-1 to 1 mm-hmm. to win the Super Bowl. After picking up OBJ, it's like 14-1. 14 to 1. 14 to 1. So that's like you doubled your odds. That's that's favorites conversation. Yep. I think the Pats are the leaders at like seven to two or whatever. Yeah, which they've probably been for like the last like fifteen years. I need them to beat the Pats on the road. There, it has to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um. So speaking of Cleveland, Cleveland should be playing for a for a first round buy next year, and I think anything less than that's a failure. Okay. Which is crazy to say about the Cleveland friggin' Browns. Well, think about, like, like a big thing. If they didn't have, uh, was it Hugh Jackson the first couple games of the season? Yeah, they would have made the playoffs last year. Yep. 100%. Hugh's got to be the worst coach in the history of coaching. Yeah. Worst coach in Browns coaching history? Yes. That's a low, that's wor- a low bar wor- to get Worst up. NFL coach ever, period. End of sentence. Find me one worse I'll find a redeeming quality about them. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing redeeming about Hugh Jackson. Yeah. You literally have to like... He literally got picked up as an offensive coordinator by another team. I think it was Kansas... Was it Kansas City? It was their rival, wasn't no. it? No. Because... Ba- Baker, yes. Yeah, Baker Mayfield yes. got ma- mad at him. He got picked up by the friggin... Vikings? No, Bengals. Bengals. Okay. And the Bengals, who were still competing for a playoff spot, immediately dirted the rest of their season. It doesn't even matter if he's your head coach. He was an assistant on the Bengals, and they immediately went to crap. That is that is what you would call a cancer in the locker room, for sure. He's a bad coach. Yeah. No two ways about no it. No doubt. Um, so speaking of uh, teams that will be, definitely be plummeting in the standings next year, although I'm not sure, like, the rest of the team, so, Kaylee, maybe you can fill me in on this. How bad are the Pittsburgh Steelers going to be next year? Because I mean, Le'Veon Bell left for the uh, New York Jets. He signed there. And just a couple days after Antonio Brown signing with the Raiders, how much worse are they? I mean, Bell didn't play this year. That's fair. Brown was a cancer already. Okay. They still made the playoffs. Yeah. So No, no, they, no they just missed, didn't they? No, they made it because they won the division. Oh, was it them in Cleveland that were yeah. neck and neck? And yeah. they, they made it all. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. They still, they probably got. I had nine, six, and one. Yeah, and they lost the first round game yeah. pretty handily. So, I mean, it's Pittsburgh. I don't bet against Steelers. <clears throat> it's just one of those teams you don't bet against. You don't bet against Steelers. You don't bet against Patriots. Yeah. So it's the same kind of like way you don't bet against Crosby and the Penguins ever for. Yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see. Is Pittsburgh in a playoff spot right now? Yep, they sure are. Yeah, I believe third in the metro. How? How? They're they're so bad. <laughs> I mean, like, I wouldn't bet against Steelers. Big Ben's getting old. I think everyone knows that. Yeah. How old? How old is he? Is he in his? He's 40s? in his late thirties. Late thirties. Yeah, he won't be. A, like, he won't be a starting quarterback for much longer. His body's taking too much. He played an entire season with a fucking jacked up leg. You're gonna have to bleep that f word. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. No worries. But yeah, he played a season with both a jacked up leg. Like mm-hmm. Big Ben's put his body through a lot. Mm-hmm. How, how many Super Bowls he's got? He's got like two. Two. Two, three. Maybe three. Was he an MVP for one of them? He had to have been. But I think the first one against Cardinals. Yeah, but yeah, like you see him play now, he can barely like move and everything. Like, like his mobility is definitely like. I mean, like his big cool. his biggest thing has always been that he's really hard to tackle because he's huge. Yeah. He still is. He's just not as mobile as he used to be. Yeah, so it makes him a little bit more of an easier target least, when he <coughs> never was. But he's still got Juju to throw to. Like, I think the team's fine. I don't think they're better than the Browns. They might not be better than the Ravens either, but yeah. we'll is, see. Is that Juju Smith-Schuster you're talking about? That is, in fact, Juju Smith-Schuster. That is, talking that about. is that's such a great name. Yeah. Um, so how much, time, how, how much time do we have? Because I think we're just about ready to wrap like this up. Like three or four minutes. Three or four minutes. Um, Sean, can you try and find out what the box score is of uh, Alberta and Lethbridge? Are they even playing right now? Ten. Oh, they play at ten? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, that's why the... Really, really quick. <coughs> is it coming up? Because yeah, well, like, <coughs> if we don't mention it, it will come up. Um, oh, yeah, Sean, Sean's story. 
David yes. Kelly? Yeah, we should, we should end on that. Which one? You said you had... You had a story about David Kelly. David Kelly. Yes. And, and we also want to talk to you... We wanted you to share two stories. One was that, and the other one was... Calling St. Thomas's AUS championship win. Yeah, let's let's let's, okay. let's end on the how, how how much time how much time specifically? Okay, oh, so, uh, I can be quick. Like four, four okay, minutes. So okay, where, yeah. Where, tell where us about this. Where do you want to start, David Kelly? Yeah. So D- David Kelly. So my dad works uh, for Pure Leader. He works at the call center in Moncton. Uh, for those who don't, you didn't listen or didn't hear. Uh, David Kelly was the longtime equipment manager for the St. John Sea Dogs during their championships and everything. Well beloved. Uh, Tara Sloan from Ho- of Hometown mm-hmm. Hockey even posted a very nice photo of him battling cancer for a long time. Recently nice passed man. away. So just to give you context, if you didn't know, weren't aware oh, that he had, had passed. Yeah. So you know, and they, they had just traded for Jonathan Huberto at this point in time. So it was pretty big, but they couldn't get the jerseys there in time because it was it was sort of back loaded in a warehouse out in the middle of nowhere. So then, uh, apparently, it was close to Moncton, so we were going there to play a game anyway. So my dad says, "Well, I'm going up there anyway, so I'll bring it to you." And so, so then he said, "Oh, like he he was so grateful for it, and it, and it was su- such a big moment for him that he he gave us a tour of the of the locker room." And one thing I'll never forget is one of my teammates' brothers. He was standing on the logo. And that's something you don't do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I remember he was freaking out. He's like, no, no, no. So then he, he just said, whenever, if you're ever in St. John, just call me and I'll uh, give you some free tickets to the game. And really? he, he was very nice. And he even uh, he, he let us sit on the bench and he even let us play a game at a Harbor Station. Wow. Yeah. So That's crazy. a very generous so, man. So w- was this like one of your teams that you were playing on growing yeah. up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I was in Pee Wee. So I would have only been like 11 or 12. Yeah. And that's probably not the only. You're probably not the only person he has done that for. No, no, no. Um, yeah. v- very nice man, though. I like, and uh, I, I know him from a few <laughs> connections I have in, in the hockey community, and just no, j- just a great man. And it's a shame to hear that he uh, ha- had to pass so young. Mm-hmm. So, but, how old no. was he? He was forty. He was only forty. Only forty. Two and a half minutes calling the AUS championship. Oh man, it was exhilarating. It was, and see, I I was almost sad that I didn't get to be a fan for this one. Because on like you know like I was subtly fist pumping whenever St. Thomas would score, but on the game winning goal for those who watched it, it was a, a Lauren Lego just weird shot from the slot, and it it found its way to the back of the net past Carly Molnar, and it, the the whole place went bananas, and and it was really cool to just be on that broadcast. And did you hear Monday Show? Nuts. Hmm? Did we? Did you, did you hear Monday Show? No, I haven't yet. We played the first, like the we like we played the last, the the, last we we played, played the actual last minute of play for the last minute of play. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, were you intentionally trying to give a jab at the referee? On which one? On the last couple minutes, you, you, you took a jab at the referee. Twenty something seconds left for uh, where the face off was or something like that. Oh no no no! I don't think that was intentional. Like an intentional jab. It was low key, but I mean, yeah. I, I I wasn't trying to call it the referee. It's just like you got to get that call right, and like realistically. It probably should have come all the way down. Well, I mean, they assessed coincidentals. But I mean, yeah, I, like and, and and like I said, there you did, you had to make it dramatic. Mm-hmm. You had to. Fair enough. No, it's it's poetic. Anyway, it's all the time we have today on overtime here. Thank on CHSR nine seven nine FM in Fredericton. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we will be back Monday from two to three in our regular time slot. We will have all the information from both University Cups. They'll both be finished, and uh, that'll probably be our big breakdown for those. Um, So we'll see you guys then.